A very good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer from Clonina Rectory. Again, I'm in the rectory just avoiding unnecessary toing and froing from our churches during this period. You're very welcome to this service of morning prayer. It begins on page 101 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you and also with you. Jesus said, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle, the Canticle Venite, we take together verses 1 to 7. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning at the 10th verse. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 65, verses 9 to 13. That's beginning on page 662 of the prayer book. Psalm 65, verses 9 to 13. Let us recite together. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. 
you crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness and the hills be girded with joy. May the meadows be clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit, submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our second canticle this morning is the canticle Te Deum. We take together the part one together. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father, of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Our third reading is the Gospel reading. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Jesus sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, 
but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third canticle, the Canticle Benedictus, again let us recite together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be forever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. At the beginning of the lockdown, when I was out numerous times in the grounds here, of the rectory and the church it was incredibly surreal the quiet and i'm sure many of you can relate to to what i'm saying maybe particularly those of you in towns and cities uh, no traffic noise whatsoever not even the hum of people passing by of children playing of buses or trucks passing not even the sound of uh, cyclists making their way uh, along the road out there literally just complete and utter silence no sound of humanity whatsoever the only sound that there was uh, was the chirping and tweeting of birds and the hum of bees and other insects so it really was quite incredible and a reminder to me and I'm sure to many of you of the need to be able to set aside some moments of quiet in prayer with the Lord to, to hopefully maybe be able to begin our day with a silent moment of prayer with the Lord or if we find that very difficult maybe during our day to set aside a moment for prayer with the Lord and hopefully too in the evenings as well or at night to also have that moment of quiet prayer with the Lord or better still family prayer together uh, as, as a family maybe to end our day to reflect back over our lives and to give thanks to the Lord for the wonders he has worked for us. And as I say, that's uh, something that comes out very strongly in our gospel there today when Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Because the reality is we live in a very, very noisy world indeed. If you think about it now with restaurants beginning to reopen, pubs and other places of business such as hairdressers, even shops and so on, that we go into them and very often there's a radio uh, playing and it can be pumping out very loud music oftentimes or even just the sound of, of human voices, uh, radio discussions and so on. So very present to us the whole time is the constant hubbub of noise of, of humanity, of, 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 of being human beings around us. We have the noise of drills on the road and as I say again the traffic noise, the return of airplanes to the sky. So we have all of this noise going on around us and again emphasizing the need to take a moment back to take a step back of quiet with the Lord and to be able to meditate and pray uh, making the light of Christ alive in our hearts 
But there is also another noise that Jesus mentions in the parable there of the sower in the example he's is giving of the uh, seed being uh, <coughs> spread by the Heavenly Father. And that is the uh, choking effect of the world, in a sense, and of the devil on the word of the Lord. And that's something we need as Christians to be very, very conscious of and aware of. We continue to remember in our prayer our persecuted brethren, the brother, our brothers and sisters in Christ in so many parts of the world where they are not free to practice their beliefs as we are and to indeed daily risk death for merely being Christians. And it's really quite despicable and dreadful that in our world persecution of any religious uh, group, of any group of people in our world is still continuing, but we remember in a particular way the persecuted body of Christ, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now here in Ireland we're lucky, thanks be to God, that we are able to gather freely. Indeed many of us anxiously waiting for our churches to reopen, to begin to return to community wor worship, to begin to return to fellowship in the Lord. And thanks be to God, that's something that we're able to do at present. But the reality is that we face the humdrum, we face the hubbub of noise of the, the devil and the world in so many other ways, apart from just the noise, as I mentioned, of traffic, of airlines, of radios and shops and so on, but of the opposition to us because of our faith, because of our belief in Jesus. That wall of opposition that uh, tends to be growing, I, I feel, towards us as, as Christians world trying to portray us as cuckoo for believing in God, for loving the Lord and also for, for speaking out, for articulating our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ. So it's very difficult for many Christian people at the time with that wall of opposition and many indeed feel the uh, need to, to, to be silent faced against that, not to face the bitter hatred of the mob on Twitter or in uh, other spheres uh, of being portrayed, as I say, as cuckoo because of our belief in the Lord, because of our faith in Jesus Christ. So we ask the Lord to give us the strength we need, the courage we need to continue to proclaim that he is Lord, that he is alive and that he is in our hearts, our minds and uh, active in our world and to spread, continue to spread the message of faith, continue to spread the good news throughout all the earth. And in a special way, as I say, we continue to remember our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ, Christians across the world, the most persecuted uh, faith in our world today, and to remember them and that the Lord will increase their hope and give them the help that they so desperately need and that we may change the hearts of world governments, that all may worship uh, freely in our world. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday After Trinity 
Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayers which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The first Collect of Morning Prayer, the Collect of Peace, together we pray. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people, let us pray. In our Gospel today, we are reminded that God the Father is a generous sower of seed in our lives. We pray that the seeds of love and wisdom he bestows on us all will fall on fertile ground and that our lives will be fruitful and bear witness to his goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who promote the word and love of the Lord in our world. We pray especially for the missionaries in those most dangerous parts of the world where they are giving hope to our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray that the seeds sown in this community and in communities across our world will bear much fruit and bring new shepherds into the church to tend God's flock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all our far farmers, particularly those in famine-stricken areas of the world, that the seed they sow may be fruitful and that there will be an abundance of food for all in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the unemployed and all those worried about the security of their jo jobs, for those in financial difficulties at this time that they may receive a generous share of the bounties of the earth gifted us by our all-loving Creator and Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them. We remember those in hospital, those who have recently been in hospital and have returned home to recuperate or are in convalescent homes. We pray too for those in our nursing homes and we pray for those preparing for surgery or preparing to go into hospital. Lord guide the hands of their doctors, their nurses and their surgeons to bring them soon to full health of mind and body. And for all those who are sick Lord lay your healing hands upon them and grant them health of mind and body. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Continue to keep safe and well. Have a good week and God bless you all. Amen.